वेलकम बैक टू अयास टेक दिस इज द इलेवेंथ पार्ट ऑफ माई सीरीज अबाउट क्रिएटिंग फुल स्टैक कॉन्टैक्ट ऐप इन द वनीला जे एस सो इन दिस वीडियो यू आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्यू मोर थिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी मेड सम अपडेट्स इन आवर कॉन्टैक्ट पेज we uh, for example when you reload it earlier you will see the hard coded text and it should not show anything until uh, we have the contact available from the database so we have hidden that content and uh, we displayed that content or section only if contact is available from the database and meanwhile we are showing a preloader that you can see it is saying loading please wait so this is one thing that we implemented and other than that we made the delete button functional uh, so for example if you open that uh, if you click on the delete it will delete it and it will redirect you back to the home page and other than that uh, we also implemented the edit button to update the contact so you can see i clicked on the edit and it has loaded the contact in the form and you can update it and click on the save button it will take you back to the home page and you can see the updates in this list and further we have added the edit button uh, in this row as well so you can directly uh, open the editor form from here as well and these are the changes we made and we also made other uh, different uh, changes like refactoring of the code improvements uh, reusing code so in if you want to see them then please continue watching and learn from it so next i i want to improve another thing that when you open a contact you see a instant change there for example when you open it we see a yas tag written there so that was the default text that we added there uh but, but that does not look good uh, it should show this entire section only when a contact is found otherwise it should not show any even fake information so that is that does not look correct it does not look good so you can see that whenever you open a new thing it takes a few seconds uh, maybe one second then it loads the real data so we want to hide this entire section until we get the exact data that we are waiting for so for that let's open the front end project and in the contact.html i will actually by default uh, make uh, this entire section as display none to the css and then i will mark it as display block as soon as we get the data okay so for example if you inspect that area you will see that this is the div that contains the the entire section the content if we hide the content section then we will not see this area so let's add style display none so by default if you open this page you will see nothing so we want to load this once contact is available so we are loading the contact in this function and we are rendering the layout here so we can uh, display that contact area inside the render layout so because render layout would be called only if uh, there is a contact right so i will add some line breaks at the bottom and then i will do uh, i will get that element document dot query selector and the id is content and then i want to add some styles style dot display should be block so let's see if that works yeah you can see that 
uh, it was hidden but once contact is available then this line of code has added a style on that element with the display block that made it visible so that this behavior is much better than before one more thing that i want to add is i want to show some text that would be saying loading so when uh, so it should show a text or something some icon or some animation uh, that it is loading until the content is ready so for that let's uh, add another div here div id uh, you can call it preloader okay and that i would add loading please wait okay so you can see it is there so you can so whenever i will show the content uh, i want to hide the preloader because i don't want to show both of these elements at the same time so for that copy paste the same line of code and replace the id and here instead of saying block i would set it to display none so that we could hide you can see that when we reload it uh, it by default it shows the loading preloader and after contact is received from the back end then we hide that element with the help of this line so this was a improvement after that we have a delete button that is not functional yet so we have to make that functional so for that uh, so this is the button so let's add the click event on that button on click and here call a function delete okay uh, use the delete function name because uh, this is a reserved word as you can see from the error message it is saying identifier expected delete is a reserved word that cannot be used here so let's rename it to delete contact and we have to update here as well that's fine now so first of all let's test if function is being called upon clicking on the button so for that type alert and see so i clicked and you can see the alert that means that it is working next we need to write the logic inside this function so that it could delete the contact uh, but remember we already have written the logic that actually deletes uh, the contact so if we write it again then that uh, is like we are reinventing the wheel that is not a good practice so we have to reuse the code wherever possible so that we avoid repetition of the code so in order to use reuse the existing code remember we implemented it in the index.html so let's go there and find out the code that is actually deleting it so let's search delete contact so here you can see that we have delete selected contacts function so if you go there and you will see uh, we have logic here so we can refactor uh, this code a little bit so that we could re because right now this code is uh, this code is only specific to this index.html it has a lot of code that is only relevant to the index.html for example selected contacts and things like that so we don't want to uh, keep them in our reusable code so for that first of all let's go to our uh, generic file that is common.js so here mostly we keep the code that we want to reuse so uh, okay 
here I'm going to create a function delete context okay and in this function I am expecting to receive the IDs of context okay now go back to the index.html and carefully extract the code that we need first of all we are sure that this is the code that uh, can be moved there so I am just I have cut that block of code and pasted here and now we are seeing the error that we're using a weird so we should add async here all right now instead of selected contact id we have the ids coming from the parameter so i will replace it with that okay so further if you go there here we have to call that function that we just created in the common.js so let's copy paste the function name but make sure that uh, this function name should be unique because maybe we already have uh, created this function on this page as well so i am searching for that i can see that there is no function defined on this index.html so it's fine it is safe now i can just call it i know that this function is available to be called the reason is that i already have added my common.js file here so that's mean this function is already available in this scope that i can call but the issue is that in this function i have to pass the selected contact id so for that you know we already have the variable somewhere here so this is the variable just pass it there and call it and i have to use a wait because whenever there is uh, async before any function that fun uh, function becomes a promise and you must have to resolve that promise so whenever you call that function so i call that function but uh, i also wanted to resolve that so that the logic of that function could be executed so i used the await you could also use a dot then but you know we are uh, using await approach that is better approach so now uh, i think that's all uh, but one last thing the base url uh, is not available in this file so let's find the base url oops so i am getting this actually i will cut this base url this url i will define that in the top of the common.js and instead of calling it base url i would call it backend base url because this makes more sense and this is less generic so this is more specific so here i also have to change it again i'm telling you that this variable is, is available in this context or scope the reason is that this variable is defined in this file and we have included this file in this index.html Hence, all of the public functions are available in this file as well because of this uh, code, okay? So, now, let's see if loads contact, if everything is working. You can see everything is still working fine. And, uh, we should check on the index.html no, no nothing is working fine yet so we have to check it for that go to the inspect element and open the console you will find there and it is saying that backend base url is not defined okay so let's understand why is that the reason is that uh, this code is uh, the all of the code within this file is defined after this script so for example the backend base url variable was available uh, after the execution of this script so at the time when this code was uh, being executed at that time backend base url was not available this way a yeah, variable was available after uh, this code at the end here so that's mean we have to add this script uh, this uh, code above to this script the reason is that uh, first all of the variable and function would be available and then we can use those available variables and functions below 
so that's how you should do it now you can see that it is working so that's great now as we know that our delete uh, function is available in the common.js so let's go back to the contact.html and here we just have to get the uh, id from the url so for that uh, i am going to right now the i am getting the id in the load contact but i am not saving it globally so this the scope of this variable is local that's mean this id of contact is not available out of this function so i have to make this id variable global uh, so that i could access it anywhere outside of this function as well so for that i will define another variable let contact id is equal to uh, by default it would be undefined but uh, i will uh, update that variable with this line and uh, obviously i have to use this variable from now on and uh, i can use that contact id here as well but before i do that another thing i noticed that i should improve is that as we know that our backend base url is already available in the common.js file that we can reuse so we should not write this base url again we should reuse it from the common.js for that uh, type backend base url okay so next uh, here i have to call the delete contacts function that is coming from this file okay now also i have to add async because this function is returning a promise so i have to call a wait here further i have to pass the list of ids i can show you again here that this variable the function is expecting the array of ids so that's why i have to pass an array so i know that at this page we have only one id but as the format of the parameter uh, uh, tells us that it uh, needs an array so even if there is one id we can pa create an empty array and pass one id when in that array so now this is still an array but with just one id but make sure that variable is correct so this is the contact id that will go in this function and that would delete it but another thing once you delete the contact then uh, it should not stay on that page because the contact is deleted now it does not make any sense for you to stay on that page uh, so now you should uh, you should be redirected back to the home page uh, right now i can see an error uh, in the console that is saying that contact id cannot access the contact id before initialization so let me see what's going on there scroll up okay so look at that uh, we are calling a function load contact first and after we are defining contact id so what will happen is that once we call this function uh, this variable is not defined yet and it is it has browser has started to execute all of these lines first so once it uh, was arrived browser was arrived to this line uh, it uh, tried to access this variable contact id but at that time contact id was not defined yet so that's why it was giving us error this kind of error that cannot access contact id before initialization so we have to initialize a defined variable before calling this function so that this variable could be available uh, available before uh, using so now if you reload it you will notice that there is not any error anymore okay so now uh, let's redirect user back to the home page so for that yeah, remember we were used window.location is equal to slash that would take us back to the root url okay so let's click on the delete and wait i got an error it is saying that base url is not defined so let's see uh interesting go to the common.js yes this is the issue we are using the old variable that does not exist anymore because now the correct variable name is backend base url instead of base 
URL. Okay. Now let's try it again and click on the delete button. You can see that in the network, uh, this endpoint was hit. If you open that and click on the headers, this is the uh, one second. So yeah, that was deleted. I actually I opened the network tab after uh, hitting that Node.js endpoint. That's why that network call was not recorded. So I will show you again. So I will not close it yet. So let's remove this one. Open this and click on the delete button. And you can see that here we have the hmm, interesting. I cannot see the delete call why is that so i will tell you what was the issue why we were not able to see the network re network request in the uh, in this area and when we uh, clicked on the delete field. the reason is that uh, before we see that request we were redirecting user uh, to the home page so that why it the page was reloaded so this is the reason so if i comment it then you will be able to observe the request so for example now click hit the delete button and you can see that we have uh, so we have this uh, endpoint hit in the network tab you can see that i am uh, calling this endpoint on the delete method and if you go to the payload or preview you will see that uh, in the payload we are sending these IDs and uh, there is nothing in the preview yet because we did not return anything in the response so <clears throat> that's perfect and also you can see that status is also 201 that we returned from the back end that is a success status for us so uh, now I'm going to uncomment this part again so that it could take us back so now we don't have any contact left anymore so let's create few contacts again so that we could use them hello abc at gmail.com number.com whatever click on the save email format is not correct so let's fix it and click on the save okay create another one and other name email at gmail.com phone web.com click on the save okay so after that is done next i'm going to show you how to update your contact so for that if you click if you open your contact you have the edit button so if you click on the edit then it should take you to the uh, contact editor page uh, and we will pass the ID in the URL like this and then we will capture that ID from URL and we will get that contact from the backend and then we will uh, populate all of the values that we receive from the backend and we will show them in the form that would be visible on that page so I will show you everything to you step by step practically so you will not miss anything so first of all we have to find the code for the edit button then we will add the click event on that button so before doing that let me commit my code first so that you can get it on time so we basically refactored code and we also implemented the delete button so contact detail page implemented delete function and refactored some code okay that's it now let's open the contact.html page and here i'm going to find the edit button this is the edit button and on that button i will add an event on click you can name give it any name whatever you prefer so i am naming it edit click and obviously i have to 
define that function as well so function edit click so whenever user click on the edit uh, button then we should redirect user to the contact editor page we already have a page with the con with the name contact editor dot html uh, so far we were using this page to create a new contact but this time we will reuse the same page to edit the contact as well okay so first of all let's redirect user so window dot location uh, is equal to uh, pages slash contact slash editor dot html so let's see if that works or not so maybe path is incorrect yeah path is not correct you can see so we should have added the slash in the beginning because if you add the slash in the start of the path then that's when you are telling that please start from the root directory of our project so it will start from the root directory of our project and then it will look into the pages folder and from the pages folder it will find the file contact editor.html so let's try it again so click on the edit and this time you can see that we were redirected correctly so next thing is that right now at this page we don't know that which contact we want to edit so we have to pass a contact id in the url like this okay so let's do that for that uh, let's convert these double quotes into the back ticks or template literals and after that i want to add question mark id is equal to here i have to pass the contact id this is the contact id okay so now let's try it go back and click on that it if you click on that you will actually i did not reload that so let me reload it okay now if you click on that you can see that i have the id in the query string variable in the url so now i can use it right by the way we still did not implement the uh, picture yet we will also implement that later in future so for now let's implement the update feature so we have the id in the url so we let's open the contact editor and here we have to write a logic or a code that would detect detect the id in the url so if we find an id in the url then we should uh, search for that id in the database with the help of the node.js endpoint so here uh, So whenever a uh, content is or body is loaded we should check for the ID, or maybe you should not wait for that you can just get the id from the url so first of all i will call of i will define a function load contact okay and i will call this function based on a condition and the condition would be that call this function only if we have the id in the url if there is an id in the url then we will uh, load the contact in the uh, these inputs uh, if not then we will not call this function and it would behave uh, with a default uh, pro uh, method so by default it would uh, it would create a contact so we will update this logic as well so if we found our contact id in the url then it will uh, then it will not uh, hit this endpoint it would hit another endpoint that we will we will set up in short amount of time so on the top of the script i will type uh, if uh, let me copy paste the code that we used earlier to get the query string variable so this is the code that we can copy paste okay all right so we have the contact id we will check if contact id is found then 
load contact right so in the load contact function i will use that id by the way remember that we have uh, we already have uh, uh, we already have write we already have written a code that we use to get a single contact and we did that on the contact.html so instead of rewriting that code maybe we should reuse it so for example in the load contact you can see that uh, this is the code that you can reuse it reuse okay so instead of rewriting it i will create a reusable function in the common.js file like this function get contact and here i need a contact id in the parameter so that i could pass here that's fine now i will return the contact that i got from the json function all right now if you go back here i have to delete it and i will reuse the get contact function and obviously i have to pass the contact id and i have to use await because this function is returning us a promise uh, again i told you uh, whenever you add async then that's mean that function would return you a promise so it, so we know that we are returning a contact here but that contact would be turned into a promise so if you want to access to that contact that you returned from here you have to resolve that promise first to access that contact so i am resolving that promise with the help of the await keyword and let's save it in the contact variable okay so in this way we have fixed the code now let's go back to the contact editor.html and here i want to load the contact so it would behave in the same way we have reused uh, that function also i have to add async in the start so that i could use a wait and i have the contact id i'm getting the contact so before doing anything let's first uh, double check if we are getting value correctly or not for that type alert json dot stringify contact and reload it all right you can see that i'm getting the contact so that's mean it is working correctly now i can use this contact object to get its properties and to load uh, the values of those object properties into the form fields right so let's do that i'm uh, going to the inputs so let's see so this is the full name input and uh, this is the email input uh, e input with the name email and this is the input with the name phone and this is the input with the name website we don't have to uh, give them ids or classes to access them we can directly access these inputs by targeting their attribute name so that is very so it is same like you if you access if you want to access an element in the css you normally use the attribute selector in the css to access that or to target that specific element so we will use the same kind of selector in the javascript as well to target these inputs for that uh, i will say email input is equal to document dot query selector and in this uh, i will specify the attribute selector that is name should be is should be equal to email so in this way it will select only that one element that has the has the attribute name with the value email similarly i will copy paste to get all other inputs for example other than in email i have full name 
so same for the name uh, also i have own input so so make sure that uh, these spellings are 100 percent correct you can uh, give any name to these variables it does not matter because variable uh, means that it can be anything but these should be 100 percent same as you have defined in your inputs for example it should match 100 percent match these attributes and values otherwise it will not work so that is what you have to make sure so after phone we have website and in the website i have added the value for the attribute and for now i guess that's all uh, later on we have to work on the labels as well if we will have labels and we will have to load them here also the picture that would be in the future so now uh, we have the inputs now we have to fill them by loading the values so for that email input dot value i guess well or value let me try with a well or maybe value let's try from the value so we know that we have contact dot email so let's see if that works yeah you can see that it is filling the email so similarly for other inputs i want to update the values so for full name the property name is also full name and for the phone the property name from the contact object is also phone and in the website input we have the same name in the property of contact so oops not input it is website sorry without input okay now oh, one more thing this should be phone input not phone that's great now okay you can see that it loads the data once a contact is available so now we have loaded the data into inputs after that if you hit the save button then it should not create a new because right now if you hit the save button then it will create a new contact that is incorrect for example here right now i have only one hello and I opened this. If I clicked on the clicked on the edit button, if you click on the save, it will then uh, call this own form submit button, and then that will that will uh, hit the create endpoint. That would uh, in result create a new contact. That is not what I want. Uh, for example, I click on the save, and once it is done, you can see it has duplicated the hello because it. Uh, try to recreate uh, the same contact so we want to control it we want to hit another endpoint instead of this one if we found a uh, we found an id in the url so for that first of all i want to refactor my code i want to move this part of code into another function that would be create function async function create okay and then let's select all of this code and uh, paste it in here okay also we don't need the base url because we already have the base url coming from the common.js we can reuse the same base url so backend base url okay now uh, i can call the create after that i also have to add a wait so if you want to use a wait you have to add async in the start of your main function and now i want to call create function only if uh, there is no contact id if contact id is undefined then call the create function otherwise call the update function there is no update function so i will have to 
define that function or maybe let me search for it. yeah there is no update so i have to define that okay so so in this update function i will write the same kind of logic again so like this instead of create i would add update so obviously i will have to define or create that endpoint in the node.js as well to make it work so data would uh, stay same we don't have to change but another thing very important we have the data variable and we are using in the update and create function but we did not uh, pass them so we must have to pass the uh, this data in both of these functions so that we could access them to use in the body so now i have earlier it was not available and this would create uh, this would crash my application it would show the error in the console so now i have the data uh, available defined from the parameter i will just reuse it okay so now i am passing it okay okay i will update this code because i don't want to use uh, dot then i want to use await for that let's type await and remove all of this let response and i'm going to cut it remove it and then let uh, by the way we don't need json because uh, we will not use that data that would come back from the update or create endpoint so we don't need uh, to call dot json let's just uh, call this one so it would redirect to the home page only after promise is resolved because of the await so if it would wait for a few milliseconds or seconds uh, it will wait for the backend response once res once response is there it will go to this this line and it will execute it and it will redirect the user to this path so same thing should be for the create as well so let's refactor that and we don't need uh, dot json and same thing here okay another thing that i can see here is uh, being uh, repeated actually we sh we don't need two functions we need only one function so here i can uh, require another parameter that would be action okay and i would rename this function from update to uh, save okay now uh, instead of having uh, these two i will remove all of this and i will just call save because we want to save at uh, in, a, in in every case so we need data and in action uh, i'm going to use ternary operator if there is contact id then action is update otherwise action is create okay i hope that you already understand what i am doing here this is just a simple short form of if else condition so this is the condition and this is uh, the responses from the blocks of if uh, condition for example if this is true then it will uh, use this string and if this is false then else uh, part is there this will use it okay so now i don't need this code at all and further 
I can just use the action here. So if action is update, then here it will say backend URL slash update. And if this is create, then backend it would be backend URL, backend URL slash create. So that's great. I guess that's all what we need. One last thing that I just forgot that we should do is that if you are updating, then you have to modify the data, right? So to modify the data, uh, you have to pass the contact ID as well if you want to update because in the data variable, we don't have the contact ID yet. So for that, we will check if there is contact ID or you can say if action is update then data dot id should be equal to contact dot id in this way we have updated the data object by giving it the contact id now we will not change anything else and this data would be passed as the body of this endpoint whenever we will hit it and now let's go back to the uh, node.js code and uh, we have to define this endpoint now so we will copy paste the create contact endpoint to reuse some of its logic uh, maybe we have to remove a lot of things i'm not sure so We will start from uh, line by line to understand which code we need to keep and which one we have to remove. First of all, we have to replace create with update. And here I need a contact ID or maybe let ID is equal to request.body.id. Okay. Now insert, uh, instead of insert, I need update query. Right. So for that type, I have uh, update contact set then you have to uh, specify the name for example phone is equal to single quotes and then add request dot oops you have to add this syntax because you want to get the value from the object property that is request dot body dot phone and then add comma and keep adding your fields with the comma separation so next field is email use email and after that we have first name and after that we have website and then at the end we don't want to update all of the contacts we want to update a specific contact from the database that has uh, that have that has the id that is coming from our body so for example if you don't specify any condition then in if you go your database uh, we have multiple contacts there right so we have multiple contacts and it will update all of them because you are not giving it any condition so for that don't forget to add a where condition otherwise this is a very dangerous action that is irreversible for you where id is equal to id right now we are checking if there is an error then show that error uh, not only that we also should send uh, that error to the front end as the response so response dot status 501 dot send error dot error i am sending an object with the property error and in this property i am giving it a value that is coming uh, from the parameter of my callback function of the query right so if there is an error then it will stop here uh, if there is no error then it will console the log and uh, then we need 
nothing i guess here so i will just remove everything else so response dot send uh, you can just return a status send status 201 right excellent so now it's time to test our endpoints for that let's uh, go to this and now if you hit on the save button then it should update and redirect you to the home page and in this page you should see that change for example in the hello i want to add the world uh, world uh, w o or l d now click on the save uh, no it did not update so there was something wrong let's see what is wrong in the console let's see if the, actually i will not be able to see the error in the console because i am immediately redirecting user so the page is refreshed at that time so i want to avoid that for that uh, for time being i will disable this line so that i could observe my consoles and network so for that let's update that click on the save yeah there is an error in the console that is saying that 501 that is the error that we are returning from the node.js remember we were returning we were sending 501 error from the node.js so that is that error now if you want to see what is the error because this is just a status there should also be an error that we sent uh, with the help of the object so this object should be in the network click on that click on the preview so this is the object that we sent from here and this is the error property that we created and within the value of this property we will find the error message so the code is error bad field error and it is message of error is saying that unknown column first name yeah that is incorrect we don't have the first name we actually have the full name property full name so same for this one okay now it should not crash so let's try it again click on the save and this time no error i guess uh, but yeah there is still i guess same error. or maybe this is the old error i will refresh it yeah it was updated now uh, finally i'm going to uncomment the redirection code so that it could redirect back to the home page after it is updated updated now click on the save and if you see that the contact has been updated successfully now let's try this one type again here and click on the save all right you can see that our update functionality is working perfectly fine now i want to add one more thing uh, to improve the user behavior that is uh, whenever you want to edit any context you have to uh, click several times for example first of all you have to click on this to open the contact then you will have to click on the edit button so you are opening the editor page in two steps i want to open the edit page in the one step i don't want to go to the detail page first so for that uh, we can add the edit icon like the delete icon here so for that let's get the edit svg so let me see if we can edit get it easily uh, You want SVD. Uh, this is paid one, so let me try bootstrap icons. Search for edit. Yeah, this is the pencil. Click on that, and maybe yeah, we have the SVD here. Just copy this SVD. Nothing else. So now uh, go back to the index.html find the delete icon and yeah this is a delete icon 
actually we already have a font as awesome setup so why don't we just use the font awesome uh, classes instead of using svg so i'm going to copy paste this and here instead of trash i will use pencil actually let's open the font awesome edit icon so So it is FA dash edit, FA dash edit. Okay. So instead of delete selected, I want to create another function that is edit selected, actually not selected, edit contact. So in this case, uh, in the delete, in the case of delete, we were getting the selected, uh, uh, we were getting the selected. Actually, uh, I am, I guess I am on the wrong. Uh, uh element i should not add it add it there i should add it actually i am changing the code here but uh, that is not the right place so let's revert it i will cut it from here and let's find the other edit button so this is a table body so we are loading the content from here of the table so here i will just copy paste this code okay and instead of delete i want to call a function edit contact right and we already have the id great now instead of trash i want to show edit okay so you can see we have the edit but issue is that these icons is too small uh, so, and this is not looking great so let's try to find its css Uh, if you want to find uh, its CSS, just click on the inspect. Uh, it hides the those edit uh, those icons. So if you don't want to hide them, then hover the entire row like this and click on the hover check it and in this way this will would not be hidden and you can easily inspect them so i clicked on that i can see that uh, we did so if you want to see from where the font size is coming just click on the computed and we have the font size of 11 if you click on this arrow this would take you to the place where this uh, style is coming so click on that now we can see that it is coming from the font awesome file and it is it has given it inherited property we want to update that for that search for table in the table uh, we have the we have column in the column we have uh, fa and font size should be let's say 15 pixels let's see if that improves it or not uh, i guess i did not run the sas processor i have run that so the command is written in the package.json remember we created this command so we just have to run that command to run the sas compiler run npm run this okay now now if you make this change again it will recompile it and if you reload it then you can see that the size of icon is bigger than before now and that that is almost acceptable now so let's test it so if you click on that uh one second
so added contact let me see if i have this function so i did not create this function yet that's why it did not work so let's find the delete function and we are going to uh, copy paste it because most of the lines are almost same not most of the same but uh, this line i wanted to reuse so let's just remove all of other lines and add uh, edit contact so this stop immediate propagation remember we added that so that uh, it could not uh, pass the event to the parent element so after that i just want to redirect the user to my uh, my desired route or path of the url so for that type uh, window dot location space and here it should start from slash and the slash it should go to the contact editor from uh, it it exists in the pages slash contact dash editor dot html and then you have to add the id in the q string variable so here type id is equal to and then this contact id now it should work just fine let's try it so for example i want to edit this click on the edit icon and you can see that we are on the edit page and that specific contact has been loaded similarly if you open another name it is loaded here and you can easily update type updated and you will notice that it is updated so we have completed the code to update our contact so i guess for now that's all i wanted to explain and show you in this video so in the next upcoming video we will try to uh, cover many other important interesting things for example we still have the uh, search feature uh, missing we did not it is static yet we have to make it dynamic so that whenever you type it should show you uh, dynamic data from the database with the head with the help of the node.js so when you click on that it should take you to that contact page whatever you will select from there and we also have the labels feature missing we have to implement that as well we have to create uh, create make the create label feature functional as well so we have a lot of work to do yes so we will keep doing that so so far if you guys have any questions or any concerns then then please don't forget to ask them in the comment section i would love to answer the, your questions and also please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to get notified for the future episodes are parts of this series so thank you for watching my video see you next time